Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video today. I'm here with Dungeon Meshi episode number 16 reaction. Okay, the previous episode, um, Lias and his group was were trying to get out of the dungeon. But um, yeah, first of all, they uh, go and like you know run into dried flowers, at which you know like they start like you know like coughing and uh, you know like the the whole like uh, you know those those particles of the the, the pollen or whatever. You know, it started ma making them like extremely obviously uncomfortable and like you know, they started sneezing and everything. And uh, seeing that situation, Marcel decided to teach Lyos magic basic elementary magic you know and uh, she was able to teach him uh, a little bit but then later on they run into some cockatrices and uh, yeah like she, Marcel gets bit by it and uh, <laughs> unfortunately she like petrifies in a weird way so you know they were they had to be very careful in case she falls down and like and breaks herself um, but yeah, in the end, uh, because of the joint effort of Lyos, Jilchuk and Senshi, they were able to break the petrification. Nobody knows which process worked because each person did their own thing. Like Lyos tried to use the magic, Jilchuk brought in like some vegetables, the Senshi like fed them and everything. So nobody knows which one was the reason why she was able to break the petrification. Maybe it was one of them, maybe it was all of them, who knows, but you know, it did work out in the end and the petrification was broken so yeah um so now let's see what happens today in this episode episode number 16 let us begin i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here take it to whichever is a preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go okay Hmm. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, nice. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. We need to understand the patterns. Mm. Lock was firm. Mm. Damn, that is a lot of um in this investigation he did. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's exactly the same street where they had to yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. No, it's probably something else. What? What is that? Wait, so the blood and everything is gone? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh my god, no, 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 no. Oh! Yo, what the hell jump scare was that? <laughs> Bro. Yeah, it did happen. Is it not? Right. Oh no, the dragon! What? Yeah, you think he'll fit? Oh my god, he is fitting. <laughs> oh, I see. I was like, how is he fitting there? Okay, makes sense. Oh my god, bro. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Liqui he she liquefied the wall. What? Keep the dungeon clean. Ah. Uh. I see. I see. So there, there wasn't any spell involved in this. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> ah, these are cleaners. Oh, so what are they? They're, they're not monsters? <laughs> right. I see. So he sweeps them away. Eat the remains of the dragon. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and then probably it hardens later on. Now it's still squishy. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Digestive system. Probably adventurous, like, you know. Hmm. Okay, yeah, as I said, the statues will point in the same direction. It's like a clockwise way of, you know, like, there's a few other things. Oh, wait. I mean, here. We're there. Okay. <laughs> that. What is that? What? Oh. Yeah? Oh yeah, they need to um, go up through the... <laughs> well, yeah, obviously they're talking about a meal. What? Oh, Marcel thought you... Okay. I see. Hmm. Hmm. Depetrification herbs. Hmm. Oh, it's like nice. What is that? It's like oh, it's like a squishy type. Is isn't that what ostriches um eggs are like? Like squishy kind of? I'm not really sure. Like no. I think I remember reading somewhere. <laughs> mm. 
Would they have it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. Digging a spoon. What is that? Br Wait, what? No. That's weird. Yeah, why did you do that? Exactly. Uh. Green carrot. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the? What are these people? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What in the. What the hell is happening? What is that? It's like a spider. Is that. Wait, that's. Oh, there you go. Um, oh my god. Um, the, they're here. What's, what's his name? Um. Like Kabru and the, you know. <laughs> what? Yeah, you think he's a moth? Uh, Shudo's here, yep. <laughs> yeah. What, what the hell? Well, obviously, and... Yeah, you think he's doing fine? <laughs> oh, wait! That's not his name? Oh! It's like a nickname. Oh lord. Yeah, I... Yeah, Kaburu's here as well, obviously. Mm. He'll probably recognize him because he helped them. Oh no, wait, this is Lyos. He never, he'd probably not remember him. Because he's not interested in people. He didn't recognize him, there you go. Yup. Yeah, like he's so uninterested that he didn't even remember saving them. <clears throat> Probably to keep an eye, I don't know. Or oh, and that. Yeah, he doesn't remember. But I would have expected um, the others to recognize them. Like sentient all of them. <clears throat> mm. I see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like ninjas. Okay. No, that's fine with me. That's the best. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. He has a lot of people who can help him. That's why he didn't uh, team up with. Yeah. 
Yep, they did do it. Oh, a lot happened after that. Good God. Oh, he thinks that she's d digested and dead or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, like, since he's not eating, he's also, like, reducing his own power, which will hamper. Yeah. Which will hamper his uh, output. No, we have. We have stuff. Monster raw materials. <laughs> Benichidori. Damn, that's a. I said. <laughs> well, he's a good cook. What the? Three. Okay. What did she call her? What? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Senshi, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good God. Oh. Uh. Yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> Just. Yeah. <laughs> Good God, he's confused. Yeah. He's so different than at the whole rumors. He introduced himself, didn't he? No, wait. I guess he didn't really introduce himself. No, don't talk about... Yeah, don't talk about the forbidden magic. Oh god. Hmm. What? What? Oh yeah, he was... <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make it any better. Bro, he's like, what is happening? <laughs> right. Oh. Uh. Mm. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> I was just commenting on that when they were eating. Oh, we have Kinske with us as well. Oh no! <laughs> oh 
good god exactly well Well, no, oh my God. <laughs> Bruh. Hmm. Because uh, I guess he still hasn't. Told them that they use the dragons. Oh, she was there. I didn't even realize she was there yeah, in the background. <clears throat> oh God, I. Just... Oh, we have just the raw exact ingredient for that. Here we go, dragon meat. Mm, that's why she was so. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you're helping her. Wow, that is such a good analogy. What? Oh, okay. <clears> hmm. <throat> What? Yeah. <laughs> okay, normal food. <laughs> Actually, for the first time in the show. Well, they're having secret conversation. Yeah. Well, what else could he have done? Like, you know, liars. Oh, sh he realized. Right. Well, what would they have done then? Yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah, that'll be a problem. Exactly. That's why he's talking to you about in a, in a secret, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's so interesting. Wait, is that Fallen? No, who's that?
That is Farley, isn't it? Oh my god. Oh! Her eyes have changed. Whoa! He's like, she's like turning into a chimera or something. Oh boy. Hmm. And that was it. That was for today's episode. Now, right, in today's episode, we actually get to um, bump into Shuro's group. And uh, we talk to him about the whole situation, tell him what's going on. And uh, yeah, in the end, Lyos was trying to tell him that, oh, like, this is what we did. But that's why he tried to keep it a secret, you know. He said that, oh, I want to talk to him privately. Uh, but then in the end, everyone now knows what's, what happened. Uh, but yeah, as, as Lyo said, that what, what we, all we need to do is like, keep quiet about it. And uh, yeah, but I guess that won't really fly because like, there is a possibility that, the, as they said, that if the elves get uh, to uh, know about this, then that will be a huge problem in itself. They, they who did this whole black magic will probably be arrested and Falun will probably be like, you know, killed or something like she'll be found out and yeah. So, but at the same time, like, here's the thing, like, what else would they have done at that point? You know, like when they realized that Falun couldn't be recovered, like that was the only way for them to do it. And I'm pretty sure if Shuro was there along, you know, with them at that point of time, and she, he saw that whole situation and Marcel suggested that, oh, I have a way to bring her back, but it involves black magic. I'm sure Shura would have said that, yeah, go ahead. I, 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 at least that's what I think so, you know. But since he hasn't witnessed that situation, he's like getting to know this from Laios and in a third person perspective. Um, he for now he's like oh what have you done but then again yeah i'm sure he would have taken the same decision if he was then back there uh, uh, if he was uh, there back then and yeah but you know like what can i say like no one is at fault here like it's just a set of un unfortunate circumstances like lias's group had no way no other way to bring Falin back because as they said they could try to take her out and you know like resurrect her but as Marcel said if they try to <clears throat> move the body the bond between the body and the soul will weaken and it probably is not going to hold still and Falin's soul would probably disperse and she could never be brought back so that they had to do and you know at that point of time then and there they had to do something about it um, otherwise it would have been too late so that was the only way. Yeah, and uh, like yeah, there you go. That's what happened. Uh, but other than that, today's episode was basically just you know them meeting up with Shuro, introducing each other, 
and uh, what else uh, we also got to know a little bit of Shudo's past I would say kind of a small snippet where what was her name Maizuru or something um, she talks about how she has been tasked with um, Shudo's safety and you know like her, his well-being obviously she calls him bot, uh, Botchama or uh, no something like that no what, what is it called yeah yeah um something like that so obviously like that means he's like a and and we, we could probably guess he's he's like probably from a, like a very a prominent family and you know he has a lot of retainers it's more like you know kind of like a whole um uh what can i say like like you know you can see there's like ninjas with him and they like call themselves retainers so it's more like you know how like prominent beings like as, as you can see here um like our wealthy nobles they had like a lot of people working for them and you know, a lot of retainer and uh, you know he is like that little boy who is probably um like the son of the the person in charge so as as he as she says like the lord by lord i'm guessing he's talking about her she's talking about his father uh, the lord tasked me to uh you know take care of uh, shudo and you can see like she she was like a she was like a i guess you could say like she was like a guardian kind of like you know being for shudo uh, as a you know as shudo was a kid she took care of her and everything and uh, now you know this is as she said this is one of the first times she has asked me to help her out like she has he has been uh vocal about his uh, what he wants so she she decided to help him out that is why um also so another thing we get to know and this was one question i already always always had why did he like not team up with us if he wanted to help find Fali. so i think i understand the reason why he didn't first of all when he was teleported like transported out of the dungeon the first thing he probably thought was obviously to help Fallen, but then he realized the only way he could make this possible is he have if he have has like the best backup with him and who like you know obviously he has a lot of retainers and a lot of people who will help them if he asks them so he decided to do that exactly that he went back home and he asked Maizuru to help him out and Maizuru probably was like sure let's go and brought all these people you know all these retainers with her you know, probably they're, they're probably like one of the best fighters of their you know family as well and uh, decided to bring them along with him so he decided that would be the best course of option and that was actually the best option because you know he has now now we like you know like he has like so many people who can help him out and since this is a dungeon they can since they're so strong they can probably easily clear a lot of places without even you know like yeah without having any problem so that was the best course of action also he, there's another thing that i felt like i you know like I, I thought that's what he thought at least he thought that um Lias and his group will probably not come back or even if they come back it'll probably be later he didn't realize that it's like Lias's group would immediately like drop everything and just jump into the dungeon to save Fali and that is probably also the reason why Shuro didn't contact them because he assumed that oh obviously they're weak and they're tired they'll probably take a few days off and then they'll probably go back to the dungeon after getting amp like you know after like recruiting people and probably you know going in to help her out so shuro being obviously very concerned he thought he probably thought that i don't have that amount of time if i have to wait for them so it's best that i just directly go in with the people that i have so you know he probably just assumed that they'll probably not come into the dungeon immediately he will probably take at least like a few days off so he thought that he probably thought that no i don't have that amount of time i'll immediately go in so that's why he never contacted them i guess something like that i'm guessing you know i guess it makes sense you know because obviously who in the right mind would after fighting a red dragon almost dying you know immediately drop everything and just go inside the dungeon again you know
so yeah he he you know he probably thought that yeah like let me do it on my own like i have people with me they can help me out you know and uh, yeah i can immediately dive right into the dungeon to help falin out so yeah but obviously they did, he did he didn't know that they also did the same thing even though they didn't have any uh, you know like proper group and we have to understand like they were actually three of them at the very first in, in, in the very beginning um chilchuk laios and uh, uh marcel senshi wasn't there senshi was someone who came on the way you know who we got acquainted on the way so it would be like complete i don't know like what can i say like very rash decision to just go in immediately you know, with three people only um so yeah he definitely thought that they are not here so let me just do it myself um i don't know at, at least that's what i th that's what i realized while like you know like w watching this episode that's what it felt like that's what he thought okay um right and uh, other than that was there anything else in today's episode let me see um Oh, okay. <laughs> this part is kind of funny. Well, where is that part? Okay. <laughs> this part is kind of funny because Senshi says, like, if you have preserved foods, you don't have to bother with cooking. But you're still cooking, you know, for him. Um, and I know why he had an appetite for your cooking only. I know what to put into them. You know what's so funny? Like, the <laughs> Chilchak was so, like, baffled. Like, he, he, for a moment, he was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Because he's so used to Senshi and Laius putting random stuff in their food. <laughs> he thought that Maizuru did the same thing or something. That, that, immediately, that's where his head went. But obviously, Senshi was like, no, it, it was love. Um, and Maizuru laughs. Okay. And yeah, and she, she says, like, but yes, I suppose it's a little too late now. As she was saying, like, I, you know, like, eventually I want him to move over Falin. But now she's like, ah, oh, yeah, but I suppose it's a bit too late now. Depending on how things turn out, perhaps I can speak on his behalf. Okay, so here we see, I'm guessing these were like the previous masters. Sugu, Suguyoshi Nakamoto. Toshitsugu Nakamoto. Now Toshiro Nakamoto. Okay, so his father's name is. Wait a minute. Grand, so grandfather's name is uh, Sugiyoshi Nakamoto. Father's name is Toshitsugu Nakamoto, and his name is Toshiro Nakamoto. Okay, and then we have Faliro Nakamoto. <laughs> I'm guessing he's, she's thinking that <laughs> probably Falin and his his child or something. You know, if if they get together. <laughs> right all right so yeah that's what happened here okay um another thing i realized here so oh, wait a minute so i'm guessing toshiro family is more like the shogunate isn't it like um he like here's the thing since we this is like obviously this is like a fantasy like you know whole setting there's like elves dwarves and like you know so many other like things and people over here so I'm guessing Shuro and his family and everyone, you know, like all of them, they represent like the shogunate, you know, like uh, Shuro and his father being like the, you know, like the shogun and the, the next shogun, something like that. And you know, they have like retainers and obviously the ninjas, the ninjas are probably one of the biggest like um, references because, you know, I'm, I'm guessing if like, you know, like in, in the whole shogunate like, like system, Oniwaban Shu like existed, you know, the Oniwaban. And I'm guessing they probably are a reference to that, like the ninjas here, you know. So I don't know. This is just what I think. Like that's what I feel like. Like that's happening. Like, the, like the Shuro's group is like more like the shogunate uh, of Japan, and you know they like literally brought them in here. And obviously, like as they say, like they're in the like I think they like they're like from the east, yeah, and uh, you know stuff like that. So 
Interesting, and I'm guessing like like each place has like their obviously like since the shogunate exists, you know like a lot of other things also probably exist. Like I think they said that Falin and um what's his name um Laios are from the no north or south. What, wait, what did she say? Wait a minute. Just a minute. I think she... northern girl. Okay, from the north. So. Like wait, so I like um, Elias and Falling like like Russian or something. I don't know. Uh, I guess it wouldn't uh, you know like it wouldn't surprise me if they were like like Russian. Not really sure, you know. As I said, like and I'm I'm just guessing at this point. So I think like there's like different cultures here as well, and uh, you know like because we barely know anything about the outside world. The only thing we got to know about the outside world. It's that little snippet of like thing that we saw in one of the previous episodes uh, where we saw that dude, uh, the Namari's uh, employer, he, he was talking to the, the, the lord of the, the dungeon or whatever. Um, that's the only part of the outside world we got to know, you know, and seeing how like um, Shuro's whole family is like more like a, sh like a shogunate, I'm guessing they're from, like, obviously they're from the east and they, they represent like Japan and the shogunate system, I'm guessing. Also, Laios and Atfalin, since they're from the north, I would guess like something like Russia or something. Um, I don't know, maybe something like that. So maybe there's like other like um, places and other countries here as well. And, you know, like something like that. Um, I do wonder where the elves come from, like which direction like they, I don't know. They're probably like 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 this from like like some kind of like a like a forest or something like they live there like the the maybe like wood elves high elves and i don't know like we do know like the dark elves exist so something like that maybe who like you know let's wait and see and and i can see that this is like well very well thought out the whole like i guess the world i you could say uh it, it, I'm, i don't know if they're going to go deeper into it but it seems like they have a very good foundation you know in, in the world building so maybe in the future we'll get to know more about other people, like you know, like and in the other parts of the world, what's happening, and you know, and how it is. Because all we know about for now is the dungeon, and that's it. That's all we know about. You know, we haven't really gotten into the outside world. So maybe that will happen in the future. That'll be interesting, you know, because yeah. Okay. Um, right, and obviously in the end, Shudo was like mad at. Lyos and as he says like it's not only that they are screwed if everyone else get to know about this you know like if the elves got to know about this it'll be like disastrous but finally will also be in danger but at the same time like i said like what would they have done at that point of time you know like would they just be like oh like nothing we can do about it like yeah unfortunate and just move on obviously not like and definitely not Marcel. Marcel would, I, I was pretty, you know, like, whatever option she had to use, Marcel would have definitely brought Falin back. And that's exactly, like, and, and Lyos would have probably shared the same sentiment. Um, so, yeah. So, I, in no way was that happening. So, they only had that method. That was the only method. And like I said, I'm sure if Shuro was there, he probably would have chosen that as well. Like, yeah. But, you know what, let's wait and see what happens and I'm, I'm sure they'll keep it a secret like you know like as they said like hopefully it doesn't goes out this whole information um so yeah and then the final scene uh, where we see Falin is like turning into like a chimera or something she has like feathers all over her yeah and her eyes have changed and she's like oh lord Delgal she's trying to f find the king Hmm. Right. Okay. So yeah, there you go. That was today's episode. Great episode. We met up with uh, Shuro and um, Kabru, and yeah, let's see what happens. Um. Okay. So let me talk about this episode now, scene by scene. In the very first scene, we get to see as uh, uh, Liza's group. <clears throat> Chilchak has been able to find out the pattern in which the dungeon is changing. So you know he he. Tells, talks about a few of the pattern, how this is going on. Um, first of all, wait a minute, let me read this part because he gives out a few good points. Um, 
Okay, one path is blocked, another one opens up. It's on, on repeat. Okay, so one blocks, one opens. Okay, so like the basic amount of openings are still the same. So if one closes down, one opens up. So you cannot like close everything down and completely trap them. There definitely one be open and one be closed, you know, like that. So you cannot trap them. If one door is closed, that would mean somewhere else another door has opened. Something like that. Okay, this basically is on repeat. Number of doors, furniture, types of buildings stay the same. Makes sense because I guess, you know, like as they say, um, you cannot really create something out of nothing. So, you know, you have to keep the whole layout and everything the same. Even if they're changing it, it'll still have to be the same. Um, house never transforms into a graveyard. Okay. Um, walls move in clockwise spiral. Okay. Walls move in clockwise spiral. And at regular intervals. Hmm. Positions of the stone statues and directions they face are fixed. Oh, the positions and the directions are fixed. Okay, okay. So not only are the directions fixed, the positions are also there. So if a stone statue is here, it will always stay there. Even if the walls change and the openings change and the furniture has changed, it will still be there. Stop. Based on all that and more. Wait, so we can use the stone statues as like landmarks, you know. Like even if the whole dungeon is changing, you feel like, oh, this landmark, this stone statue is here. It'll always be there. So we can keep, like, use it as a landmark, you know, something like that. That will help out. Um, okay, so while they were having this conversation, they come to that part where they ate the dragon, you know, like, and everything. Chilchuk is kind of scared. She's just like, oh, no, um, the, the, the blood might be there and the, the dragging, like, you know, like the, the, the thing. Um, so he's kind of concerned. And later on, the, he realized, like, he thought that he was, like, caught. Like, he realized that they have seen the blood. And he tries to make excuses, but then he realizes that it's not there. You know, the whole dragon body is gone. The blood is gone. Everything is gone. Only there's one thing there. It's like the, 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 the wall is a little opening in the wall. A little, very little opening. So the wall is getting, like, repaired. Okay, now what the hell was this? When Lyos goes in front of the, the thing, the opening... What was this? Was this a ghoul or something? Like, I don't know. This ghoul looking person comes in and says, the magician's eye will be upon you. So, like, interesting how this is, like, we see this and we barely even talk about this whole thing. Because Lias mentioned it, that mentions like, oh, this happened. And they were like, oh, it's probably, you know, like, we're probably seeing things. I doubt he saw things. I think that actually happened. <laughs> but, you know. I guess we'll probably get our answers later, like what's happening. Uh, but for now, um, weird things are happening to Lyos, basically. Okay. Here, we get to know a very interesting thing. Okay, so... No, wait, first of all, Lyos says that maybe it's mana sickness. At which, Marcel says, is it really? What did you hear? The magician's eye will be upon you. Okay, and they realize that, oh, like the dragon is coming, you know, something's happening. So Mars is like, oh, let's go inside the wall. Now, <laughs> this part was kind of funny because I didn't realize what was happening. I thought, at first I thought like, wait, how is Chilchuk fitting into this small little hole? <laughs> then I thought that, oh, it's, it's, it's Marcel's uh, magic spell or something. He, she did something. But then when they come out, we realize it was none. It was actually part of the whole dungeon system. It was the cleaners. Um, and that is why that happened. So here we go. Cleaners. The dungeon cleaners. They're creatures, I think. They keep the dungeon clean. Fix up any damages. So like an automated cleaning system. Wow. <laughs> I figured this wall wasn't completely set yet. Okay, this is so interesting. So basically... The cleaners are like, as they say, like they, they eat like foreign substances um, and uh, then they secrete like, you know, some kind of a gooey material to fix up the damaged parts. And at first it's kind of gooey. That's why since it was in the process of being fixed, they could literally just go through it. But if it completely closed, it would probably harden. So they couldn't do that. But since it was still open, the wound was still open. It was in the process of healing. So they were able to just dive into it um <laughs> right 
Okay, another good analogy that comes up with is that it's more like a human immune system. Okay, I'm, I'm going to talk about that. First of all, <laughs> they say that they're not harmful and essentially like they are harmful. They nibble on my tent. <laughs> right. So yeah, they break down anything that they think is in the way, which makes sense, you know, if, if we think of the uh, dungeon as a body, you know, so any foreign substance that comes out, they'll probably try to take it out, like an antibody system. Um, they must have come to eat the remains of the dragon and the explosion. They show up when the dungeon is damaged. Here we go. And the secretion prevents fire from spreading and further collapses. Then they start devouring any scattered rubble. They're not picky eaters. Finally, they secrete its free secretion to fill the broken areas. Restore the dungeon into its former state. It's similar to how creatures heal. All things considered, monsters act as an immune system. Yeah. Clearing out the germs. So we are the germs. <laughs> Is that also magic at work? Pretty cool, right? And since she's like, God damn it, like, what's next? The magical digestive system? I feel like that might actually come true. Who knows? Maybe we'll come to a room where there'll be acid and everything and we'll get digested. <laughs> that might happen. It's so interesting because, you know, like the whole dungeon, as they kind of explain it, it's like a human body. It's like a living dungeon. And I think the only other anime where I got to see another version of a living dungeon, just like this, is Danmachi. Danmachi's dungeon system is a living dungeon system. You know, kind of like this, where if, as far as I can remember, like in, you know, like in the very latest season, we saw how destroying a huge part of the dungeon in Danmachi, like triggers like an autoimmune system, where a very strong monster comes out and it literally hunts you down, you know. And so that's more like the antibody, like the more damage you do to the body, that's how violently the body like reacts to it. Kind of like this, where we get to see like how, like we are literally germs here. Like we're literally the, um, like the foreign substances that have invaded this system. So the dungeon, <laughs> or the cleaners, any type of foreign things they try to see, they try to clean it out. While the monsters are more like the antibodies, which tries to attack us and drive us out of the body or something like that. So yeah, this this whole living dungeon system is very interesting. Like I said, this, I don't know if there's any other anime that has this. There's only one other anime that I've seen like this, which is Danmachi. So this is very interesting, this whole living dungeon system. Um, right. So anyways, they keep moving on. And they're finally in front of the cell. This part was a little bit confusing. I didn't realize what was happening. Like, <laughs> so here's the thing. Sanctuary's like, oh, we're finally here. Let's do it for the last time. Lyce is like, yeah, let's do it for the last time. Marcia is like, what are you talking about? And then she's like, oh, okay. All right. Now, I thought that Marcel realized what they're talking about. Because they're definitely talking about cooking food and eating. You know? So I thought Marcel realized that. But then Marcel put up the frog dress. And everyone's like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm, I'm also like, I'm like, wait, what's happening? Like, were they not talking about food? Like, were they talking about um, the, you know, the, because the, of the tentacles? Was that what they're talking about? But then I realized, no. I was correct. They were talking about food. Mars is the one who misunderstood. He thought that they were talking about the tentacles and that's why they have to put on the, the frog suit or whatever. Um, but, you know, Lyos and they're like, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, there's no tentacles anymore. Like, you know, why are you wearing that? You know, we're talking about a meal. You know, like, obviously, like, duh. Like, you know, what else would we be talking about? We're talking about eating monsters. <laughs> right. Okay, so the make food with the remaining ingredients. Okay, so they make like, like, you know, they have like grains and like the rice thing. They put it in like the containers and he puts in like meat and stuff inside of it, like a stuffing. And uh, okay, here's the thing. Like I said, this egg, this squishy egg, at first I thought it was, which egg is it? Is it? It's not ostrich. I don't think it's ostrich. I think I commented while reacting. I was like, oh, this type of squishy egg. I feel like I've, I've heard it somewhere that there's these type of eggs. I was like, oh, it's an ostrich egg. No, I don't think ostrich eggs are like that. But there are definitely eggs. Tortoise eggs, isn't it? Which are squishy. 
I think. It's not an ostrich egg because I remembered immediately that ostrich eggs are like normal eggs. They have like strong shells. But I think it's a tortoise's egg. Correct me if I'm wrong, which are like squishy. You know, like it's like a rubber ball kind of. Something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, like, you know, they, they're like using, uses the egg. Uh, and obviously use the dragon meat and everything else and uh, yeah um also here's the thing Lyos said not Lyos and she's like oh try digging spoon into the dish so Lyos does that part of the the container comes out and he's like oh I use bricks from the dungeon cleaners so basically the dungeon cleaners the the, the brick that they became the secretion you know, that's what he used, and that's why he's so squishy. Lyos is like, oh wow, so cool. Obviously, because it's a monster, type of a monster, I guess, the cleaners. So, this is Lyos we're talking about. He's, he's very interested in eating the new types of monsters. So, he's like, oh wow, can we eat this? And he puts it in his mouth, and then he's like, uh, it, it looks it, it weird. It, it tastes like dirt. Well, obviously. <laughs> Good God. Okay. All right, so now we get to see this thing this monster like spider monster kind of thing who like wraps him into like a thread and then all the other like you know like um shuro's group comes and like attacks him <laughs> then she's like yeah okay okay so yeah shuro comes in and shuro's like stop it like you know they're it's okay like i know them Okay, wait, so what was that, that, like, spider monster thing? Is, was it one of them who did that? Is, is there, like, a, like, some kind of a summoner here? Like, who summons monsters or something? Like, oh, I'm not really sure, but it was definitely one of them who did that, didn't it? And also, the, the, the spider looked a bit different, didn't it? It looked like a drawing. Is that a drawing? Right, it, it might be, it, it, like you know the, the, pic, the, the, the spider thing reminds me of uh, like you know Shikamaru's, uh, not Shikamaru, who's that, um, um, Sai from Naruto, Na uh, Sai's like paintings, if you've seen Naruto you'll know what I'm talking about, Sai used to do paintings and they used to come to life, you know, like it looked like an ink painting this looks like, is it one of those things? Um, oh another thing I realized here. Maizu has like wings. Is she like some kind of a Tengu or something like that? It wouldn't surprise. Like I said, it wouldn't surprise me because you know, like um, they're like you know, the like the the shogunate, and obviously since they're from J Japan or the eastern, as as they say in in the eastern territory, it wouldn't surprise me if there's like Tengu and like you know, like yokai monsters, and uh, we see like ninjas are here. So yeah, and there's Oni here as well. I'm sh I'm guessing this like Miser is like some kind of a Tengu or something, or something like that. Um, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, Lyos is like, oh, like Shuro's here, yay! <laughs> and they take out the the string. So he introduces Senshi to you know like Shuro, and then Lyos sees the other group members as well, Kabru and everyone. Now here's the interesting thing. I was like, oh, will he recognize him? But then I realized, like, oh, Lyos is literally not interested in people. That is what we have, would have been established. He barely remembers anyone. You know, and, you know, just like, just as, as much as how he, are, he's so interested in monsters, he's equally as disinterested in humans. So he probably will not recognize him. And that's what exactly happens. Kabudu, like, introduces himself. He's like, oh, hello. And Lyos is like, oh, hello there. And that's it. He doesn't recognize him at all. However, this is what surprised me. I didn't realize that everyone else would also not recognize him. At least I thought like Senshi would recognize him or something. But I guess he also didn't. Um, like, like I said, I could understand Lyos not recognizing them because that's literally his personality. Uh, but the others were also not able to recognize him. Uh, yeah, I was expecting Chilchak and... Um, uh, what's his name? Senshi to recognize him or something. They also didn't. That's interesting. Um, Right. 
So yeah, Rin comes and talks to Kabra and Rin's like, oh, he's the one who stole the stuff. Stuff didn't. He doesn't even recognize us. Now what? And Kabra's like, oh, no, that wasn't my intention why I came here. It's not because of our stolen stuff. I'm just interested in seeing what they'll do from here onwards. You know? And yeah, he's like, just wait for a bit. L l let me just see what they do for now. Okay, so Lias is talking to Sen uh, Shuro. You know, like, and uh, uh, obviously Chilcha comments on how there's like so many people here, you know, so many people, all these connections that she has and everything. Um, yeah, and he's like, oh, they're just retainers. And he's, he apologizes for leaving the party and everything. And he said, and this is where he says that I thought that it was the best way to get back to the dungeon and find her. Like I said, I also think that he thought that Lias and his group would probably at least take one or two days rest and then come back. So he probably thought that, oh, uh, let me just bring my people here with me and try to find Fallen. It will be way quicker. Here we go. I'm surprised it came immediately right back. Wasn't this a rash decision? And Master's like, just so as you know, we did defeat the Red Dragon and a lot of other things. And Shuro's like, wait, what? And everyone's surprised. Everyone's like, what are you talking about? And then Shuro, obviously, the immediate thing Shuro thinks is like, wait, you defeated a red dragon? Where's Falin? You know, what happened? And yeah, he probably thought of the worst scenario immediately because Falin wasn't there. He, he thought like, oh no, so is that Falin digested or something? Is, he, is she like actually dead? So she, he starts panicking at which Lyos is like, uh, and yo, know, he, he almost like you know, falls down like an you know, unconscious. And uh, Lyos is like, oh, don't, like you know, okay, like, like, I'll talk about that to you. Not now though. Um let's eat first you know like and he says like yeah if you don't eat obviously like how can we get your energy back so let's eat first you know then i'll talk to you and yeah and like um, uh she was like can you please prepare something maizuru and maizuru is very happy because as she says this is the second time he has asked something of her and uh, the first time being uh like you know help, try, like you know asking for help to save Fali. this is the second thing she he has asked her of and he's, she's very happy. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> she's like, everyone, like, let, let's, let's make food. <laughs> right. And uh, guard the young master. One thing I'm trying to think, why does this girl have so much makeup on? You know, like the, the other girl? Because, you know, obviously they're like in a... Like, this, this, this girl, you know, the, the shorter girl. Like, she's the only one who has makeup on. I do wonder why. Um, you know, because nobody else has them here. I guess I would say, like, and if she's a ninja, I guess it makes sense she would have makeup on because, you know, because uh, ninjas, especially kunoichis, they have, like, you know, like, uh, they have to, like, like, put makeup on and everything for disguises, maybe, like, you know, to uh, charm the opponents, you know, these type of things. But they're in a dungeon. I do wonder why. I guess that's just her style. Yeah, it's probably it. Um, either way, um, she's like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's cook. <laughs> Normal cooking for once, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maizu immediately says that the other girl, the one in the, um, the, the mask, she says like, keep an eye on the food. I don't want anything straight mixed in the food. And Chilchak was like, who should I go with? You know, he's like, here we have Lyos who probably try to feed Shuro something weird. And here we have Senshi who's also probably going to try to feed something weird. So, you know, Shuro's, <laughs> Lyos is with Shuro, so I think everything will be okay. Senshi, however, he's with Maizuru. If he says anything, like, remotely, like, oh, let's eat a monster, oh, it'll be over. So he decided to go with Senshi. Wise decision, I would say. I also agree. <laughs> Yeah, they kind of like break up into three groups. Uh, over here we have uh, Marcel, um, Rin, and this other dude. I don't know his name. And then over there we have Kaburu, uh, uh, Laios, um, Shuro, and that other girl, the masked girl. And <laughs> and she's like, uh, she's like, who should I go with? Yeah, like I said, I think he was correct in going with Senshi because if he, she, if, she, like if. Lyos brings something weird up in front of Shuro, it'll be probably be fine. But if Senshi brings something weird up in front of Maizuru, oh, it'll be over. <laughs> right. Um, anyway, so they start their cooking and everything. 
And uh, yeah, so there you go. Okay, so here we see Lyos talking to Shuro and Kaburu about what exactly happened and you know, like how they got attacked by the magician and now they want to go back and uh, you know, get some help from the outside surface. But now that Shuro's there, he's like, thank God, we can continue this. Uh, come, let's save him, her. Mm. Okay, Kabru asks a very good question. Like, how did you know it's a lunatic magician? And, you know, like, how did you manage to escape? At which Lyos tries to keep it a secret, obviously, because he cannot really bring out the whole black magic thing in front of them. So he's like, oh, we have our ways, you know. Yeah. Um... Right. Okay, I love how Shuro's like, why were you eating a brick? At which he says that, oh, they were made of dungeon fuel. Shuro's face is like, what is this dude all about? <laughs> like, they're eating monsters because they don't have money for food? And, <laughs> oh my god, and, oh. Uh... And Kabru's like, oh wow, that's so hilarious. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, and then Kaburu and he starts talking about what they have eaten, like, you know, like the red dragon and everything. And yeah, he's like, whoa, you ate the red dragon that ate your sister? That's interesting. I, I even commented on this back then. I was like, wait, how can, like, <laughs> like, how can Falin eat the red dragon whose flesh is literally her flesh now? <laughs> That's crazy. Anyways, um... Okay, so they talk about like um, the living armor and all that stuff as well. He introduces Kensuke. Um, okay, so all that aside. <laughs> they talk about orcs and Elias is like, Oh, don't worry, we've taken care of them. Obviously, which means that he, they like are allied with them. Kabru thinks that they if, killed them and ate them. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, um, so, okay, so he, uh, here Lyos comes to the main point, he's like, I think Falin should be somewhere down, you know, and, uh, okay, and, uh, it was like, what happened, tell me, give me more details, and Lyos is like, oh, can I speak in private, please, you know, because obviously he didn't want to let Kabru and the, that other girl know about it. Now, while all of this is happening, um, uh, Miser is making food, um, and she talks about how, like, you know, Shuro was very thin back then and didn't eat much. And the only thing he ate was, like, some, like, stuff that Miser made, and uh, this was one of the only times he asked her for help. And as he, she says, like, you know, I never thought she'd, he'd fall for, like, a northern girl, um, and he's like, she's like, oh, like, later on I'm sure it'll, you know, he'll get over it but yeah and uh, here's where Senshi comments on that whole uh, like love thing she, he says like oh like you are putting stuff in it you know like if you wanted you could have just fed him like frozen food you're cooking for him which shows that you genuinely care about him and uh, you know stuff like that <laughs> in the end like you know like later on they go and try to bring the food to Shuro and when they go in, they see that Shuro's grabbing uh, lives by his throat. They're like, what happened? Did he attack you or something? But Shuro's like, no. You know, like, what have you done, Lyos? You know, the fact that you got involved with black magic means if you get caught, or if any of you guys get caught, you'll be locked up in the dark until you die. Not only that, Filin will also probably be hunted down. So, and Lyos is like, yeah, if things get out of the dungeon, then only. That's why I'm telling you guys, you guys, you know, should keep it here only. Don't let this go away. And he also comments on that, on elves and how, yeah, on how if elves get to know about this as well, it'll be a bigger problem. While Kaburu is like, wow, this is so interesting. I wonder what's going to happen now, how they're going to take care of this situation. And then in the end, we get to see that scene with Palin. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, there you go, that was today's episode. Quite a lot of things happened, and uh, yeah, we have grouped up with uh, Shuro's group now. Like I said, I do wonder what's going to happen now. Are they going to continue the journey, or like, I'm sure Shuro will continue the journey, but I do wonder what's going to happen with Lyos and his group, because they are definitely very tired, and uh, like, I think they're going to continue, because here's the thing, 
now that like their main goal to go out was to get more allies that is the only reason why Lyos agreed you know but now that they have this whole new group and Lyos knows that they will continue further into the dungeon to save Falin he's probably going to say something like oh we'll go with you guys as well and uh, you know something like that and if Chilchuk is like oh like no we should go out he'll probably like you know like say that oh but you know like we have our like backup now and uh, yeah and i also think that this group is now i don't know what's kabru going to do is he going to join us or not you know his group if kabru's group join us as well that'll be even even better i guess you know we literally have like a huge group like elias's group then we have um senshi's group uh, not senshi sorry um shuro's group and then if kabru's group is also with them i am not really sure what kabru is going to do now like is he going to keep going with us or are we going to break up our group here? Because I'm pretty sure oh, the only person who is interested in this whole situation is Kabru. Everyone else other than him in his group probably doesn't care. They'll probably go, go away. If they can. But we do know they are friends with Kabru and they see him as a leader. So I'm sure a few people, if Kabru decides to join us and go with us, I'm sure a few people at least from his group will join us as well. For example, Rin. I'm sure Rin will like follow Kabru. Uh, who else will follow Kabru? A few others maybe, you know, with them, who, who are with them will probably follow Kabru. Um, yeah, so don't know what's going to happen. But Shuro's definitely going to continue the journey with his group. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing Lyos and Master will probably jump in and be like, oh, let's go. Senshi might also join. Chilchak, I don't know what he's going to do. He'll probably, by the end of it, he'll be like, okay, fine, let's go. Uh, but he's definitely not, um, like, he, he's definitely not comfortable in going any further. But if everyone is like, oh, let's go, then he might, like, give in to peer pressure and just go along with them. And then maybe Kabru will just, you know what, let's wait and see. I don't know how this is going to go. But, yeah, they have quite a big group now. I feel like it'll be okay. For now, at least. But who knows? Uh, what's going to happen? Let's wait and see. This this show always surprises me um, with its developments. So maybe something completely unexpected will happen. Um, yeah. So let's uh, see how the story proceeds. So that is it. That is my reaction to episode number. Um, wait, what episode was this? Sixteen. Episode number. Yeah, sixteen of uh, Dungeon uh, Meshi. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know. I'll check them out. That is it. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Dungeon Mission. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.